Hello, I'm going to do your past life wisdom and healing service now. I'm going to use the nickname Zeus Thunderer for you, but I think I'll just call you Zeus for short. So you've shared some really cool stuff with me, some really beautiful pictures and um, some really cool facts about yourself. And you have some interesting questions here too. So I'm going to share these and then we'll go and see what Spirit has to say, okay? So you want to know, is my friend Rebecca my soulmate? What physical, mental, spiritual skills have I developed in my past lives? Who have I been in my past lives? Which countries and time periods did I incarnate? What do I need to do to stop incarnating on earth? What happened to the Greek gods? And what is my connection with Zeus? So you put in summary, you're not so much interested in the emotional mishaps of the past, but more interested in knowledge and skills that you have developed in past lives. So... I'm going to connect with your spiritual atmosphere, and then my spirit guides will share wisdom associated with your questions, okay? So, I am looking at a human spinal column. I'm looking at bones that create a human body, and I see the bones, I see the outline of a physical human being, but they're focusing on highlighting the bones from the back, the spinal column looking at bones that are illuminated. I can see them clearly. I'm inspired to touch them with my fingers. I'm inspired to explore their meaning. I'm taking a bone from the leg and I'm looking and inspecting it. I see your face. There's the words mishap, I think of bones playing on the xylophone, sounds and notes that create a scale, a scale of musical notes. It's interesting because scale is also sort of a fish-like skin, There's something to the words. There's something to colors as well. Showing me, it's kind of childlike because you see an image of bone, a skeletal person using bones to play uh, notes on like a, a xylophone. And so the notes too create colors in the atmosphere and the skeleton's always smiling, right? It doesn't have any face at all. It's just the mouth, but it, all, it sort of always looks like it's smiling. It's like crocodiles. Can they ever frown? No, because their mouth always looks like they're smiling. Something about this is something silly, but it's silly only to me in the way that I see the image, but there's nothing in the energy field that is really denoting humor about it. It's something serious about it. They're showing me literally bones playing on the back of a human being as though the spinal column is the scale. So I see a human being laying on the ground, I see a skeleton taking bones and doing this on the back of a human being. I f see a man and he s feels very good about this massage. He's really relaxed as well. He's drifting off into a deeper state of being. I can feel it myself, drifting off and disconnecting from everything. I see a very, very long tongue, like a, like, you know, a frog that spits the tongue out. It becomes extremely long, right? So it's like a really long tongue and it's got kind of a stickiness to it. Then it actually comes, whips around and like, whoosh, really makes a noise like that. And then it comes back into the mouth. I see a very long road and it creates the neck of a dinosaur. It's a pathway, but the pathway itself is very long and it even, it looks like a pathway, right? 
it goes straight ahead, but it's curved up like this and around, and it looks like like it creates the neck of a dinosaur with the, the dinosaur with a really long neck. I'm not allowed to place any. I'm not allowed to tamper with the images they're sharing in order to create more information. They only want me to share what they are showing, the pictures they're showing me. I'm trying to go somewhere is the issue here. I'm trying to solidify the wisdom so we can learn more. But part of it is I am trying to go somewhere. I'm trying to get... I don't want just bones playing a song. I don't want just a pathway that creates the neck of a dinosaur. I need more than this. That's what, what this feeling is. They're smiling and they're delighting in the wisdom we call patience. We're teaching about patience. That's what they're saying. So I say, okay, I accept. I am on the pathway that creates the dinosaur's neck, and it is long. It is curved. And although in the perception of the eyes, it looks like, in one, in one view of it, it looks like a very long pathway because it starts here and then it goes really small. How many miles into the distance? But then because of the curvature and the way that it is, it creates the illusion of a dinosaur's neck and then head. They're asking me a question. I'm exploring walking it as though it, a, it is a pathway. I'm also exploring sitting down here at this entrance of it as though it is the back of a dinosaur so I could ride the dinosaur. Again, there is a sensation of being beaten down, not being able to rise up, not being able to become a higher, to get there. To get there in a pronounced way that is profound. To feel like you are an ant instead of a dinosaur. Not as mighty. This is a big deal. Because ants may be small, but they too are mighty. Just because dinosaurs are big and we can see them better does not make them mightier. Ants can carry very heavy things on their backs that would seem impossible if the scale was at our level. There is a fiery, angry sort of energy that is entering into the scene, and it feels like a massive foot that is stomping down, just one foot that goes stomp really hard, and it's got a fieriness to it. And it is literally a very large man, and it's got kind of a Zeus feel to it, and he stands mightier than the dinosaur. Dinosaurs cannot create fire. I can create fire. I am man, mightier than dinosaurs. He is engulfed in flame. This is important for you, and they're not explaining why. They're showing me what is balance, and in the hands of balance, which is, you have a balancing mechanism, right? And then from it, there are two trays, and in these two trays, there's liquid within the trays. There is, that is what I'm seeing. I'm thinking about how is flame ever going to be mightier than the water? Water then puts out fire. But they're saying this is about balance. They're showing me balance in now two very large containers made out of gold. And there is sort of an image of flame that creates light on either side of a very shadowy dark room. I see a single man walking. It is a very young man. Walking in the shadow, but walking in the light as well, because the flame creates illumination. He is making a decision on his balance and who and what he is. 
it has to do with reflection as well. He does not choose to look into the water in order to comprehend his appearance. He chooses to experience, therefore understanding who and what he is as a mighty soul. Mighty soul defined as a human being. What is mightier, human being or soul? You must know the answer to this. There is another version of angry energy that says we are done with you experiencing the human side of your mightiness. That's even to the degree of you have buckets of water that are so full that now the water is starting to trickle over and you are choosing not to see a deeper reflection. They're pushing the water out of the way and now the water is falling and spilling out. And now it is only you. This is still a child version I see, just the outline of a young boy, maybe six or seven. Flame is on the outside rippling on a dark screen. We have flame out here and it creates sort of like an orangey red hue and you are in the light of this orangey red. We aren't talking about this anymore with these two buckets of water. There's a really huge metaphor, energetic metaphor going on with that beyond words. And the focus is on specifically you. There's a vulnerability about this because what does this mean? When it is time for you to step into your power, what does this mean for you? How do you create the mightiness of a soul through the experience of a human being? You have to choose to stop being human. How then do you scale beyond this? How do you go up the scale of mightiness? This is a big deal. It's overwhelming me. Because the musical notes are also notes of you raising your vibration. They're saying you need to make it fun. It can be joyful. It can be fun. And you need to learn how to rebalance with the experience of joy that creates the power and raises the vibration and then allows the spiritual reflection then to be the definition of who and what you are. They show me a man, he has four arms on this side, four arms on that side. He has his face looking off to the side. He has some sort of headdress on, it looks like Medusa snakes. It is definitely a man in build, though. His body has muscular build. And it is man, but it is also chiseled in stone. We are taking a piece of paper, and then we are making a drawing. We are, we've got like a crayon, and we are creating the outline of this. And now we are looking at it. There's something here about fossils and taking imprints and old history that we are studying and examining in a, in a way like a researcher would, looking for the scientific details. It's not on the emotional level, it is on the scientific level. How do we comprehend this carving in stone through science? How do we understand this carving in stone through the emotional meaning of it? Will it just then be a carving in stone or can we bring it to life through the emotions of it? How will we understand the meaning of this carving in stone if we do not comprehend the way that it felt? The reason why it is there is there because of emotions. 
this is too is talking about Greek gods. Their reflection is a state of emotion. Their reflection is a state of harmony. Their reflection is a state of spiritual balance. Shining through a human experience. How do you bring the voice of Zeus out of yourself? How do you do it? Through taking a imprint of this and examining it like a puzzle piece. Or do you blend now body with spirit and then allow spirit to shine from the body? How do you bring the flame and internalize it and now you are the fire that creates the illumination? That's what they're saying. They show me a T-Rex and it makes a loud noise and it has really big, long, sharp teeth. They're asking me if I think it is smiling, and I'm saying, um, it looks like it's going to bite somebody's head off. <laughs> they say, does the alligator look like that too sometimes, or is it smiling now, Abby? <laughs> it's like, ooh, it looks a little bit scarier than smile. <laughs> and they're talking about mightiness can also create t intimidation. If you are standing before a T-Rex and you see all these teeth and now it, it looks menacing, it intimidates and now it feels like it has power through intimidation. What truly is its power? Is it its brute size? Its big sharp teeth? If you have a gun, you could just shoot it in the heart and now what is its power? They are wanting you to examine this. They're saying we will not be shooting any dinosaurs today. That is not part of our message. So we will remove that from the scene and now we just look at the T-Rex. It is very tall and has very sharp teeth and it is hungry. <laughs> And when it is hungry, it uses its skills, its function as a physical form in order to, to get food. It does this by instinct. It knows how to move. It knows what it is hungry for because its body is the instinct, is the voice, is the mechanism that speaks. They show me a man of age who speaks not through the body, but through the soul. A man like a philosopher. Which is mightier? The body that chooses instinctually to eat and how it will feed itself? Or is it this aged man who has contemplated life for a lifetime? Which is mightier, they ask you. They say patience is a very mighty tool. Patience used for self-discovery. I go back to the scene where the two water buckets spill and now we just see this boy. I share the energy of patience. He desires something much more than all of this, than what he sees, feels, experiences as a body, as a boy. He desires something of a much higher quality or caliber, a spiritual discovery of self that also shines through brightly, shines through and then is his dynamic, is who and what he is. I am. He says... I am, but he tells me when I say I am, I feel the energy of Zeus within me. Now when I say I am, I hear it echo, 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 echo. But he says I still do not feel mighty enough. And I think about the old man, how many years does it take as a human being to discover the self. How many lifetimes? It 
It is quiet now. I'm channeling an energy that is to create patience, the balance of patience, energy that is to help you align with this higher energetic vibration that you understand in your heart. You need to bring it forward from your heart. It's important. So I'm doing that right now through this young, this boy. I'm connecting with him as he is also a reflection of you. I say you are worthy and deserving of this higher awareness, growth and development of who and what you are. You're trying to feel bigger <clears throat> from the energy, but you're not growing yet. It's sort of like, I could keep pumping you full of gas, but for some reason the car wants to insist that it's on empty all the time. So why do you feel that way? What is going to ignite your fire? What will ignite your passion? They show me a key. The key goes into a door lock. The key turns the lock and now the door is open. But nobody is opening the door. The key just sits in the lock. It's a golden key. You have to... So here we have what is a hand unlocking a door. But what good... What does it matter if the door is locked or unlocked if nobody chooses to ever open it? What is on the other side of it? They show me a really big mountain. It is spitting out fire and lava. It is not showcasing the smoke. It is specifically showcasing lava and fire. Mountain is. It is a mighty mountain. It speaks from deep within itself. And when it speaks, it releases energy in the form of flame, lava. It is choosing to be who and what it is. It isn't just a mountain, it is a volcano. It isn't just a mountain. Because it chooses to speak from deep within itself. And when it chooses to speak from deep within itself, now it is a volcano. Now it is mighty. Much mightier than a, a mountain. Because it shares the dynamic of who and what it is from the inside. This too is for you to contemplate about yourself. Are you a mountain or are you a volcano? There's something about bringing out the, what is deep, deep, deep within you. Allowing it to come up and out and then be that. We, there is a desire to open this door, but yet there is a hesitation as well. I want desperately to open the door, but it, it's not, I'm not allowed to open it right now. What is on the other side? I, I, I myself, I'm, I've been trying to open this door since I <laughs> key unlocked it, but I, I can't get in. What is on the other side? All I can think about is darkness. But that's only darkness until we turn the light on and then we see. There's an anxiousness. There's, I, I can't stand it. Come on, let's open the door. They show me a dog that is really, really excited. It even has something in its mouth. It looks like a briefcase. It's like, what are you doing with a briefcase in your mouth? Bad dog. <laughs> it's like, ha, 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 I got a briefcase in my mouth. Hello, I'm here. Master is home. <laughs> it's like the dog is so excited. So I am taking this out of its mouth. It literally is like a briefcase. It's got a handle. It's got, um, on the sides, you have to know the code. But it's on the two sides. 
And so I'm moving them, and, and they're in gold. The code is, is in gold. It has to do with numbers. It has to do with unlocking the mystery. This is the scientific side of you. That is, this is how you choose to unlock the mystery. Through perception and perceiving anomalies of this kind, numbers, facts. This helps you decipher wisdom. They're saying the briefcase is the emotion. What will you get with these numbers if you can't... There's something very valuable, something you're missing in all of this. Because you're doing a really great job of taking notice of those sort of variables, those facts, but there has to be the emotional component. They're showing me the key going into the lock again. What is the facts? Golden key does turn this lock, does open this door. Open door, but what else is there? These are just all the facts. We have to go deeper. They're really wanting you to ignite the fire. What is igniting the fire? Igniting passion. Bringing out the emotional background. Bringing out the emotional truth. This, okay. This is the best. I, it was has to do with some lifetime where... But I don't, it was so quick and so, it had to do with, I'm just going to pause for a minute and see if I can get it to come back to me. All I saw was you in a death scene and you having a moment of thought. It was, it, there was something that came in the way of, it just felt like you got an arrow to the body and the arrow was what you had killed you. Isn't that interesting? A gunshot to the heart of the mighty dinosaur. Now what is mightier, the gun or the dinosaur? You have a human being who is expressing themselves in an emo- This had to be you being, expressing deep emotions, and then you getting an arrow to the heart. What is mightier now? Expression of emotion or an arrow? What does it matter if the old man, the philosopher, dies? Now what is what use is his wisdom? All we have is what is etched in stone. That is all we truly know. That's really important. Because somehow, some part of something that happened to you in a past life, and it had to do with you sharing an emotional side of yourself, and then in the death process you were contemplating what this means, what it means to speak from the heart, and now getting an arrow to the heart. Now you don't speak from the heart, you're exploring other means of examining higher wisdom without speaking from the heart, without the heart of it all. I need to take some time here and examine this some more because this is a big deal for you. I'm trying to gather wisdom too about your friend and they haven't said anything about that. They show me what is a round ball like an earth and then it has flames. So you know the earth has like a blue thing around it. Well instead of this blue thing around it, it's all flame and fire all the way around the planet. So I see a ball with flame and fire. It reminds me of earth but with fire around it instead of blue. They're showing me wisdom coming from all different directions, but they show it to me as arrows piercing this ball of wisdom. An arrow could pierce here, an arrow could pierce here, an arrow could pierce here, an arrow could pierce here. We can turn it, and now we can. the arrows are piercing on different sides of the sphere. Sphere is infinite. These arrows are doing only providing the perception of damage. They aren't actually damaging, it's just a sphere. Are they killing the sphere or is it just a sphere? 
but there's something important because the tool is the weapon and the weapon now is the menacing angry T-Rex. But it, it can only, the weapon can only be the weapon. It, it, the T-Rex can only be as dynamic as its body's needs are, as its instincts. The weapon can only be as dynamic as its purpose to create harm or threaten or even kill. But there's something here about the soul. Do you have a sphere or now you place Mother Earth within it and now you have a planet? The soul of the planet. There's something about this, about physical and spiritual, but creating the spiritual, blending it with the physical. There's something important about you. Because some sort of door was closed and it has to do with how you speak the higher wisdom from your heart. And it's extremely big and rumbly and that it is time for you to stop closing the door on this. It's not going to be acceptable anymore. Because you've been doing it for too long. So what is this skill? What have you learned and developed? You have quite a wise side, but through the influence of a past life experience that created death, you altered the way that you want to express yourself, and now you need to go back to blending it with speaking from the heart, expressing yourself from the heart. Because you're getting to sort of a point in your spiritual journey where it can't continue to just be the scientific side, it has to start to be the heart side. And that is how you become the Zeus that you are. Because there's something important about this and you. There's something very, very important about this and you, and you know it. You already know it in your heart. What happened to Greek gods? There's something about this because it ha they're asking, well, what happened to you? They're helping me to see that through this wisdom, this, you needed this. This is the wisdom medicine you need because I'm seeing the boy getting bigger. Bigger from the inside, then it helps him grow larger. Because he's starting to have a, a moment of self-discovery that's important for his growth. Otherwise, you're going to remain stagnant. And it's going to feel uncomfortable, like you are a fish out of water. So I'm telling you there's something about the word scale. When you start to express yourself, express the deeper side of you, the spiritual side, and allow it to come out, you're going to feel like a fish out of water doing that because you made a vow to yourself that you were not going, you were going to keep the door closed. You were not going to open that door because there's nothing of value on the other side of the door. That's why I can't open it on my life. If the volcano never erupts, yippee, none of us are going to deal with the tyranny of vol volcanic lava and death. <laughs> but then it isn't truly being what it is. If it's meant to erupt, then it needs to erupt. Otherwise, it gets stagnant, it festers, and it's not, it's not who and what it is. And this, too, is a message for you. You know the code. You know how to unlock the briefcase. You have the key. You can open the door. You have to be, you have to discover that it is time now and that it is okay. There's something here with your friend. It's like a backbone. It's like the momentum. It's like the comfort. It is like the rose. It'll help you with this as well. Because you need some security, because it, they keep showing me, they help me feel that it feels like a fish out of water kind of experience. Because of how you slammed the door shut on a certain way of expressing yourself. And it's not to be tolerated anymore. If Zeus closed the door on himself, what now? What does that mean exactly? 
How will, how will Zeus ever return? How will the Greek gods ever return if they just close the door on themselves and they just choose to be researchers now? There's something to this. And you closed it so hard that it could feel uncomfortable opening it. But you need to start taking the baby steps to do that. And you are doing that. That is the whole reason why this wisdom is coming to you right now. Because you know it's time. That is all they're going to say. It's all they're going to say. I'm just pausing for a moment. And they're helping me to disconnect from your spiritual atmosphere. So that way I'm separating from you. That was a lot. There was some really intense energy involved with that. There was quite a rumble of a message. <clears throat> That's all. That's all I can share. All right, Zeus Thunderer. <laughs> that is your message for today. Thank you for the opportunity to connect with you, to experience your soul, and to share this wisdom. It's really good for you, but it's really good for a lot of us. We all are... We all need a rumble and a shake to see who and what we truly are sometimes. But you're really at the doorway to something far more. So you need to hear that. All right. So thank you again. And for those of you watching, if you're interested in psychic wisdom or spiritual healing with me, please visit my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Thank you for watching.